Christina from Hoopla. Hey, I'm Megan from Southern Branding. And today we are going to be talking hats. Um, and Megan has some stats that she's going to share on the benefits of kind of incorporating hats as one of your marketing strategies. I feel like I should have a hat on while we're talking about this. Are we going to? Okay. I'll put one on too. This is okay. one of my favorite hats that a client gave me. Okay. I got to go camo because, you know, we're in Arkansas. Right. Obviously. <laughs> okay. So, you know, we planned that we were going to talk about hats today and um, did a little bit of, of research just about the different statistics regarding hats in the promotional industry. And it's really very interesting that 3,400 um, brand impressions per hat. So this hat in its lifespan is going to have 3,400 brand impressions. There's no other type of marketing you can do that's going to get you that many brand impressions. 69% mm -hmm. um, of consumers own headwear. So it's something that's really relatable. All people want it, need it, wear it. 83% yeah. of people are more likely to do business with you after receiving a hat. And then 63% of people keep a hat based on how attractive, wearable, likable it is. Mm -hmm. So all of that kind of ties into, um, you know, it used to be there was embroidery, like that was what you did, flat stitch yeah. embroidery, you know, going across the front of a hat. Yep. And now we have so many other options that are mm -hmm. out available as far as decoration. So you want to just dive into it? Yes, I'd love to. Okay. Now you took your hat off. Okay, I did my hat. Maybe I'll put some more hats on later. Okay. <laughs> so the past probably year and a half, two years has been really exciting in the hat industry as far as the different decoration that has become available. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and available domestically where we can turn it yeah. here in the U.S. quickly versus it being something that's done custom overseas, overseas. Yeah. yeah, and takes a while. So just the basic kind of rundown on hats. There's lots of different types of decoration. Here's an example of taking the same logo and doing it two different ways. So this is actually a woven label, mm -hmm. very clean. And this is embroidery. Mm -hmm. Then you can, so you've got woven labels, you can do sublimated patches. Yep. Um, the sublimated patch is actually, this is not my favorite example, even though it's, it's, it's our logo hat. Right. Um, but it's sublimated. So this is, this is um, a scene in Arkansas and we use that as the background on this hat. So that's a sublimated patch. So you can, so one thing about sublimated patches, cause I just did a job actually recently for a client and they had a very intricate, um, that's circular that's logo that they mm -hmm. made. And um, when they had gone to a different vendor at first and when the, they gave them a sew out, which is what in the industry we call when someone kind of embroiders a um, piece of fabric, a backing to show you what your final product will look like to get your approval. All of the detail was just credited up on that sew out because there was so much detail. And so they really didn't want to lose anything uh, on that um, on that art. And so yeah. the solution when you have a lot of detail is to go with sublimation because you are printing directly mm -hmm. on the hat. So you can go really detailed with it or yeah. the other option, which I, the solution I had come up with is I did go overseas and I had a embroidered patch made because when you embroider the patch directly versus embroidering the hat directly, you can get a lot more detail on the patch versus doing it directly on the hat because you have that stiffer material. Absolutely. I'd say you can you can definitely get a lot of detail with um, a sublimated patch. You also can get a lot of detail with a woven label as yep. well. Yep. Um, this this would be an example of a woven label. Mm -hmm. And again, really you're not clean. It's going through the can. Yeah, very, yeah. very clean. Yeah. Um, some of the newer things that have come out that we can do turn quickly domestically for you is this is an example Leather. of a bamboo patch. Oh, yeah, I love it. Yeah. So the bamboo patches look really, really awesome. And then one, one embroidery that I love that I also want to show. Ooh, the 3D. I love the 3D. I just think it looks so retail and it's really, we're loving on some outdoor cap here, so, but I yeah, love the combination I, I of the doing, cap. <laughs> yeah, of doing 3D and flat stitch and yep. doing a combination of both. Yeah. I think it looks really, really cool. Yeah. You see that it also, it looks really collegiate when you mm -hmm. do it as well. So that's also a combination of a flat yeah. stitch and a 3D. Yep. Um, 
Also, we can do rubberized patches. I love rubberized patches. Yeah, those look so, so cool. Show it to the side, maybe. Maybe show it. Yeah. Yeah, that's such a cool technique. Yes. Yeah, so I love that. Kind of rubberized patch. And then also we can do bamboo patches. So a yep. bamboo look to a patch. Mm -hmm. That looks really fun. And um, then also the faux leather that, that Outdoor Cap's been coming out with lately. It's really fun because you can do different colors. You're not just stuck with the typical black through brown shades. You can do that teal. You can do that red and kind of have those different finishes. Yep. All it these different colors and patches. And so what these are, these are then lasered and then mm -hmm. it reveals underneath. So like this is one of my favorite ones. Uh, this is kind of... A yep. metallic look to it. So it's a brown faux leather and then it's a metallic um, kind of goldish bronze mm -hmm. that just looks really, really great. This is a, another clean example of that with a black faux leather and then the reveal on it is silver. Yep. So there's so many, so many different, like the, uh, this looks very corporate, mm -hmm. it's stylish and still very corporate. Yeah. Um, so this is blue with a silver and they're just so like you can just all of, and all of those that we just showed you can be done within a 30 day time period. So um, let's, let's segue real quick okay. into um, having that kind of more custom program and what you need to do that. And it changes with suppliers, but I think me and Megan both kind of love using it, this a same, the same supplier when it comes to like custom hats, their pricing is really unbeatable for the quality. In my opinion, you know, you can do a fully embroidered dad hat like this, depending on the lowest quantity, probably at around $10 a hat. The quality is great. Um, the turn yeah. time is, you know, less than 30 days, around 30 days. Um, but if you do want to go custom and let's show some examples of that, because when we say okay. custom, there's a minimum of 144, I believe to do the custom program. And you, if you, to play with the pricing, you have to give at least 60 to 90 days, or is it 45 to 90 days, depending on. Well, them. I think now it's even longer. So uh, this, this well, is something, yeah, this yeah. is something that you want to plan out months right. in it ahead. Um, but if you're doing something truly custom mm -hmm. and you, you have the time to do it, yeah. it's something that you are strategically planning and you're building into your calendar. So this is Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is an example of, this is actually lasered mm -hmm. into the fabric, their little icon. And then on the inside of it, Custom taping. Custom you can taping. Do the underbill. Let's do an underbill. Um, sure. Screen. And then also a custom yeah. inside woven label. Mm -hmm. um, something on the inner bill we could do. Oh, this is a cool one. So this is for, this is Buffalo Wild Weaves. Mm -hmm. So that's a woven label. All of this is custom. So mm -hmm. this, this hat does not exist. Yeah. Every single color is chosen. The piping color is chosen. The eyelet color is chosen. Um, they've actually, if you can see that yep. down right here, that's totally custom. And then the inside bill, this is their hot sauce. So like, how cool is that? And you can, you Very. can get totally, totally creative. Um, and then they've got, they've got a patch here, an embroidered patch mm -hmm. on the back. And I just want to call out a couple things. One is going completely custom like this does not cost an arm and a leg. It's time. It is time that you need that's why Megan said you need to be strategic. If you know you want a hat in your plan, be smart and give us those 90 days to really give you a wow product for a very similar price to what you would pay to just, you know, buy a Richardson and have it embroidered locally or whatever the case may be. Well, yeah. And I mean, the, the other part with this is hats are a great opportunity to um, have commemorative hats, to have mm -hmm. collectible hats, to have like a limited edition, you know, totally. every year you're getting a new hat, like you're doing it something new for an event. So it's a great value add for that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this, this is one, this is actually from a, a 30 day program, but this mm -hmm. is screen printed mm -hmm. on here. This is a woven label. Mm -hmm. And then what else do we have going on here? And then we've got a little woven label as a town. Mm -hmm. So it's just, there's endless possibilities. So and one, what, one thing I do want to say to anyone listening out there that's interested in doing hats, 
give us time, the more time, and it's really with any product I would say, but hats, especially the more time you can give your brand partner, the more creative we can get for a very similar price. It's when you come to us and say, Hey, I have, I need something in two weeks. You're limiting your options. You are not being able to be creative. Yeah. It's going to cost more. So yeah. if you know, that's, and I think we've talked about this in a prior show. Um, if you have a marketing calendar, set some time with your brand partner, yes. go through it and we will plug it into our calendar yeah. so that we can be proactive on your part and you can set it and forget it. And we will. Absolutely. And, yeah. and the benefit also, in addition to that of, of working with, when you, when you have a, a brand partner, a promotional products firm that you're working with, um, we have access to all of this. Yeah. Like you're not supposed to know about, about any of this. It's not yeah. like you can go shopping online to fully customize like that. That's, it would that's take you, word. it would take you weeks upon weeks to be able to source and figure it all out compared to coming to us, telling us what you're interested in, giving us your art. And we come, we're us coming back to you. We present with you with concepts, a good, better, best concept, timelines, yeah. pricing, and you get to look like the hero when you show it to the rest of your team for approval. Yeah, so. I think I think the point about um, the the planning on it is just a really great point, though, um, because it is super easy to you know you have those with with uniform programs that sort of thing where you're just doing basic embroidery, whatever. Yeah. Um, and when you're doing it on a quality hat, like that's that's totally fine. It serves purpose. It serves function. Um, but when you're wanting to do something that's really going to stand out, that's going to be a little bit more unique. And again, so 63% of people, they're keeping the hat based off mm -hmm. of the attractiveness of the hat. So it's that differentiating factor of how cool is it? How unique is it? How you know different is it? That's going to set it apart. And that's where like the planning comes in place. Mm -hmm. And you know, we, we can take you through that. Um, so I think this is a good segue um, to talk about how do you pick that perfect hat that's going to reflect your brand? And so a couple of things, because I come, you know, I've been in the industry now for almost three years, two and a half years, but I come from the buying end. And mm -hmm. um, I think there's a couple ways to approach it. But one way I, I kind of approach it is what's my favorite hat? Like what hat do I want to wear? But really the yeah. other way to approach it is what is the demographic of the people you're trying to reach? Are you reaching mostly men that are, let's say, in more of a blue collar industry? They're going to want, I would say, probably more the trucker hat. Now, if you're kind of doing a mixed demographic of men and women, I would say mm -hmm. a dad hat. A dad hat's super versatile. Um, and then if you're doing like an outdoorsy type of demographic, that's kind of always the hiking or traveling like a packable hat that you can pack and squish up, but kind of has that, yeah. you know, kind of retail look. So I think those are kind of the questions that you can start with. Totally. And I can, you know, just tell you based off of the, the sales volume and trends, uh, this was, so outdoor cap is, is here in Arkansas. Yeah. Um, most people, when they are specific about hats, they're they're coming to you asking for, I want an outdoor cap hat. I want this Richardson hat. Yeah. I really like this Cap America hat. Yeah. Um, and and hats are pretty individualized. Yes. People, people, you know, like what they like, which is which is great. Mm -hmm. This this for a very long time was outdoor caps, top selling hat. Um, it's full cotton twill hat, totally unstructured. And, and then and this is, that, is that hat referred to as a dad hat? It is referred to as a dad hat. Because some people don't know that. When I say, oh, no, yeah. I think you'll want a dad hat. They're like, what is a dad hat? That's what a dad hat is. What That's what a dad hat is. Then this for forever was their top selling hat. It's the trucker mesh back type of hat. And then sure. Richardson came along and had this phenomenon. The with 112. This, yeah, with the 112 hat. Mm -hmm. which just every, for, I don't know how like th their marketing is, is brilliant, I guess, because everybody wants this hat. Yeah. And so then everybody else responded to it. So now, you know, we have, we have those options from everyone else as well. So this is, this is the same guys. This is the same hat mm -hmm. just made at a different place. Right. Yeah. Um, same thing, same thing here. Yeah. So there are alternatives because right now um, it's, it's, almost impossible mm -hmm. to get this hat. Um, so if you're married to this style and this is what you really want, 
then we can get you that um, same look, same style, just, just made in a different place. And so this now is actually Outdoor Cap's top selling hat. And I will say another thing, because we are both fans of Outdoor Cap, and so I usually do use them for everything. Um, they have been slower in production, and stock has been an issue. I know they're working through that, but so is everyone in the industry. But one thing I do love about Outdoor Cap is they help with um, virtuals. And then mm -hmm. once you place the order, they do one whole pre-production sample, send yep. you a photo, yep. and have you approve it. Uh, before full production begins. And if you like, they'll, if you have time, we always say, please give us time. If you have the time, they will mail the sample to us, to you, so that you yep. can physically see it before the full production begins. And so it's so important to just give us the time. I know that's not always possible, but if you do know it's in your strategy, let's work on it now. Let's talk about it now. Yeah, if you know that you have events coming up in the fall, if you know that, you know, this might be something that you want to do as an employee gift, like the, this is the time to really start talking about it. Um, like Christina said, everybody is struggling with inventory yeah. right now. Um, we are seeing things slowly get restocked, um, but a lot of the stock is is spoken for as well. So oh, yeah. now is the time when you want to go in, start doing different concepts try to get something creative going so that we can be in line for when the inventory does arrive. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, custom. Yeah. I did ask a question on my Instagram recently and asked what people wanted to talk about. So one person said, what's good swag, what's bad swag, and how do you tell the difference? And so we kind of went into that on our first episode, which was like an hour long. So yeah. we'll have to, well, you know what, we'll have to revisit that and maybe we'll revisit that in July because I really want to focus on one of our sessions in July being about uh, ordering for the holidays, because I think it's very important, especially this year. Don't wait till October. Yeah, Do not. <laughs> like yeah. you want to actually order. If you could start in July or August, you will get the best stuff, less stress. <laughs> Like it's, it's imperative this year that if you're, if you want to do holiday gifts, you plan early because it has been a mess. Yeah. If you were that person last year that in November, you were like biting your nails, waiting on your, your holiday gifts to arrive. Um, we need to be doing that by the latest August this year. I agree. Um, you know, the, the delivery, the freight UPS FedEx, they are not guaranteeing anything currently. Um, and oh, there's only so I, much control. I had a nightmare. That, yeah. I, I had a nightmare incident with FedEx. Like they, so, they're like, unless you pay overnight, they're not guaranteeing it at all anymore. That's right. It could take two weeks. They don't care unless you pay for overnight, which is thousands of dollars. It definitely, it definitely can be. And the unfortunate situation that a lot of our supplier partners are in is they don't know right now who is going to show up to work and who is not. So on a daily basis, so on a shift by shift basis. Mm -hmm. So while something may be scheduled for production and we think it's going to be a five day production time, that may slow down and um, days added on to that if there's not the staff there to actually produce yeah. it. And that's something that's totally out of all of our control right yeah. now. So we really are, you know, event, event dates are, you know, um, something that we, that we dream about and can't, can't guarantee. And, you know, it really does take a lot of planning right now to be able to execute. So I will say, and maybe we need to do a show on this. <laughs> I will say, um, I do have tricks up my sleeve just as you do, you know, zip it, um, sure ship. Those are all programs that different suppliers offer that kind of give you that 24 hour turn to mm -hmm. send you products, but that means you waive your proof. And I have little mm -hmm. tricks around that. If we have the time, um, requesting a virtual and kind of basing it off of that. Um, also like, I, I don't know who you use for your displays, but I use showdown and I've had to stop using totally. them the last couple of weeks, even though they have the best quality in the business, because their turnaround time, just as you were saying, they don't have enough people in the manufacturing department to 
to fill the orders, to create, to, to make the products. And so I've yeah, had to- and, and this is, and it, this is not an, um, an issue that's unique to our industry. It's, no. it's happening everywhere. Yeah. Um, so for, I think for the most part, um, it's just speaking for, for the experiences we've had, our customers have been very understanding yeah. when we are totally open on, cause it's our job to educate. And so educate and advocate. And so we have to educate our clients on the front end of like, look, this is what the realistic expectation is right now. And then we advocate on the supplier and for our clients. And that's, that's what our job is. Um, But even on some of the rush options right now, if there's not that order entry person available Mm -hmm. to enter it, it may be a couple of days before that order gets entered for that rush. So it's, it's, there are no guarantees right now is really no. the bottom line. It's, it's been horrible. And I think the last several weeks I have been, you know, kind of what you said, educating my clients. Um, but I almost feel like some of my clients, especially the newer ones, thought it was like a sales tactic. Me saying, I really think you need to order as soon as possible, like now. And now I've just been very straightforward, especially with new clients. I'm telling you half the orders I I'm working through are out of stock or having production delays. This is not a sales tactic. If you need this by a certain date, I need this order like tomorrow. Like I've been more straightforward about it, but you know, I think like it, it just, it, for me, it sucks, especially with the newer client to, to say, we don't have the time. Like, but then if I, if I try to help them out, and then I, I look bad because something's happened, you know, like, oh, they, we get an email from the supplier saying, oh, sorry, I know we said our production timeline was seven days, but now we're increasing it to 14. You're just out of luck. And then I have to be the messenger for that. And, and I don't know if the newer clients, the clients that I've worked with know how I roll. So they're, I, I know they know that it's not me, um, but like yeah. the newer clients, sometimes I'm thinking, are they understanding that this is not typical. This is not me. It's something out of my control and I'm just the messenger. So that's, well, I think that that's a worry that, that we have because you know, you and I are a lot of like in that, like, I don't want to disappoint anybody. I hate, hate cringe telling a client, no, that we can't do something. Me too. Um, like it, it kills a little piece of me every, cause I want to be that go-to source. But the amount of stress when you say yes, even though deep down, you know, it's going to be like a hail Mary on it. That's right the amount of stress I go through to, to, to do it and then possibly still disappoint. My husband said, it's not worth it, honey. You need to just tell them I can try for you, but I can't guarantee it. And if you can't accept that, I can't do this for you because it's out of my control. Well, I think the majority of people are understanding of that. And then those that aren't like, this is, this is not unique to you or I, it is, it's the entire industry. It's all industries. It's, it's happening everywhere. So that is, that is a comfort. Like, you know, they're not going to find it somewhere else either. Anyone else is going to have the same issues. And I think that the long-term fallout over the next year, really, um, it's going to be very interesting with clients, um, and the different opportunities that come up. I think that we will all lose clients. I think we're also yeah. all going to gain clients. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of opportunity out there within, within the industry um, because it's, 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 it's a big world shakeup. That's where we're at. Yeah. Well, I'm going to end this with a question. Okay. I'm going to keep it lighthearted this week. Um, what, if you could choose one kind of food to eat the rest of your life, what would it be? Pasta. Pasta. Oh yeah. But, but good, fresh, like homemade pasta. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say for me, it would be Japanese food. I'm half Taiwanese. So that's, but I would pick Japanese food because it has a little bit of everything. If I'm in the mood for the sushi, if I'm in the mood for the yakisoba, the ramen, the dumplings, like it kind of has it all. So uh, I would say Japanese food. Okay. There you go. Well, we will, we'll have to figure out what our next topic, next week's topic is about. We'll have to talk about that. Um, but if you have something you want to want us to discuss, um, DM, let us know, you know, Southern branding or who blah, boy, see, um, and let us know. Okay. Sounds good. Bye. Bye everyone. All two people. <laughs> <laughs>